my name's Daniel. I'm from uh, Berlin, Germany. Yeah, this is uh, one of my hobbies. These were injured birds I had at home. And uh, when they could fly again, I brought them back and they just know me. So we're very good, very good close friends. When they were injured and couldn't fly, they're very vulnerable when they're on the ground. In fact, it's a death sentence. So if I come along and find one and pick it up and take it home, then it's safe. And then it has a chance to recover and uh, to come back and fly again and join the flock again. These are very healthy animals. I make sure they're healthy. This is maintenance feeding. I, it gives me a chance to make sure they're uh, in good shape. I can check them. I can check them for any, you know, anything. Just look under their wings and I can tell if they're clean or not. And they're, very, they're spotless. They're really good. It's another reason I'm here is to make sure the smaller birds get big enough to compete against the bigger ones. Oh, you know every one of them. Uh, each one has its own personality. It's just like a, in a way, it's just like a human being. I just found a bird one day. I, I've had house pets before, but when my last uh, cat died, I said, that's it, I can't take the trauma of, of the animal passing away. And so now these have sort of become my surrogate pets now. Uh, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, usually about three hours, starting at, say, 11, 11.30. Oh, it's incredibly relaxing. Most people don't realize one of the therapies for relaxation is actually somebody tapping in your hands. Well, this flock is probably about 50 strong, of which 19 of them were, were with me at one time or the other. There's three flocks. This is the largest. There's a couple of smaller ones over on the other side of the park, but this is the biggest. The ones over there uh, know who I am, and I do throw food down, but they weren't with me, so I brought all the birds back to this area. So uh, either they were part of this flock to begin with, or they integrated into the flock as they went along. There's lots of hawks and falcons here, and even sea eagles occasionally. Now, as what it is, there's always one or two of these birds on guard duty. Either they're up in the tree, sometimes they're on, the, like they'll go in your head. They're always looking around, and if they see something, they uh, send out a signal. Uh, it's a very high-pitched signal. We can't hear it, but they do, and so that's when they go up. Of course, other birds give signals, too. The seagulls give signals. Any of the birds around here will give signals if they see danger, and they all react. Okay, now this one, see, one of the other birds around here gave a signal. They all went up. Now this one... He, he's thinking about it. He might, he might not, but then again, he knows he's safe here. My closest friends, generally speaking, have been animals. It's not that I'm antisocial or anything, I'm not. But I just find that uh, human beings generally have an ego which no other animal has. They accept themselves as they are, and they'll accept you as you are. And I find that very refreshing. <laughs> It's like the old saying goes, nobody dresses for themselves, they dress for other people. All together, they're very, very good birds. This is my favorite. This one, this one and I, she was with me for a long, long time. Now this is something you have to see. <laughs> so she and I got very, very close. She's my best case because she, she trusts me so much that she lets me examine her and I can tell from her from her alone, I can tell the health of the whole flock. Almost kept her as a pet, as a matter of fact. It's normal oats, stuff you eat for breakfast. All right, okay. Yeah, but it's by far their favorite food. And I recommend anyone that wants to feed small birds, uh, bring oats, not bread. Bread's not good even for us, much less for the birds. It's enriched, so it's got, they can overload on vitamins. It has salt, has levels of sugar in it, which they can't digest. So uh, if they eat a lot of bread, their stomach might be full, but it gives them no food value whatsoever. This is natural stuff. This or seeds, uh, unshelled seeds, things of that nature they can eat. I've become somewhat of a tourist attraction, yes. <laughs> I'm into nature, I've always been into nature. 
Uh, and so the point is that uh, I look at it this way, nature's going to belong to the young people, so if they can associate themselves young enough with wild animals, then I think that's an improvement. I think that's a very, very big thing that they have to get into. No. <laughs> this is what makes this really worthwhile. Ha, ha, ha.